Hello my dear family members, I hope all of you are preparing well for your upcoming Capgemini exam. Today I am going to cover one most important pseudocode questions which was asked on 21st August and this is very important because only this type of pseudocode questions are being asked. If you solve this question then you will see the question, the, the other question will be almost similar. Okay, And if you solve the two days coding question then the question will be almost similar in the upcoming slots. Okay, So I hope it will be important before we start the pseudocode and coding question i would like to highlight some important experience of recent drives uh, like on 12th and 13th september that is uh, python may not be allowed to you so try to avoid python and try to learn c++ and java so that you can solve your code okay and second one is essay writing is elimination round so give importance because of negligence 30 to 40 percent students are getting eliminated in this round okay so their mistakes are like uh, they are not uh, paragraphizing that means they are only writing one paragraph okay so try to maintain three paragraph that is one is for introduction second one is for body and third one is for uh, like conclusion okay and uh, try to avoid lesser mistakes in spelling okay so i hope you understood and also you have to maintain 220 words so please maintain that okay i hope you will maintain and crack this round and give me thanks later okay and third one is like pseudocode questions are very important because 25 pseudocode questions will be asked to you so if you have been following our playlist and our materials then you are going to crack the exam because we are giving you the pseudo questions which are repeated so if you have been solving these questions then you will get common pseudo code and almost similar coding question as well okay so if you want then please damn me at my insta id instagram.com slash techno.ef you will get it this is paid but very affordable okay so let's start with the pseudo code question so the pseudo code questions as you can see this is the pseudo code question so I hope this is visible to you. Integer P, P, Q, Q, R, R. And then setting the value of P, Q and R. Then we are checking if condition, then else. Then there are some statements inside this and initializing, reinitializing, etc, etc. So I hope this is visible to you. So please pause the video and try to solve the problem. Okay, so I hope you have tried. So let me solve it and I hope you will cross verify it. So at first, uh, let me tell you something about pseudocode that is when you will see a pseudocode question is very bigger, larger problem, don't avoid it because the pseudocode questions having larger uh, size are going to be taking lesser time. Why? Because most of the time the if condition or the else condition will not be matching. So you will have to solve one part of this. So the larger problem will be the lesser i mean the smaller problem okay so that means in this case as you can see p is equal to 2 q is equal to 8 r is equal to 7 here at first we are checking our if condition so 2 greater than q that means q is 8 so 2 is not greater than 8 so this condition get eliminated so that means we have we don't need to go inside the if block so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so total sorry five so total five lines are going to be sorry total six lines are going to be eliminated okay so total six lines are going to be eliminated then we are going to else condition so else condition uh, we are getting that q is equal to initialized 8 plus p okay so q is equal to 8 plus p so p was 2 so q is equal to 8 plus 2 means 10 so it is okay actually i don't need the pen as well for you only i am using pen so here you can see if p plus q lesser than 7 minus p so p plus q means p was 2 and q was 10 so 10 plus 2 is equal to 12 okay 10 plus 2 is equal to 12 then 7 minus p so 7 minus p so let me write it 10, uh, 10 plus 2 is equal to 12 12 is lesser than 7 minus p. So 7 minus p means 2. So 7 minus 2 is 5. So 12 is lesser than 5. No. So this condition does not satisfy. So it will not go inside the e-block. So here also we have to eliminate it two line. Okay. So that means here six line, here two lines eliminated. We don't have to check this. So total eight lines get eliminated. So just you have to solve two 
to three lines to uh, get the output okay so i hope you understood so then we are just initializing r is equal to p plus p plus r so p was 2 so 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 4 plus r r was 7 so 4 plus 7 is equal to 11 okay so value of r becomes 11 just we have to get the value of p plus q plus r so p plus q plus r so p was 2 q was 10 okay 2 plus 10 is equal to 12 plus r is equal to 11 so 12 plus 11 is equal to 23 okay so i hope you understood so 23 will be the correct answer okay so uh, this way actually you have to solve the problem so as you can see in the option you will see that 23 is there okay so i hope you understood so this way you will solve the problem so whenever you will see a greater problem just try to solve that problem first so that it will take lesser time okay so let's go to the coding question so the coding question was regarding this as you can see this is the advanced coding question which was asked on second that means it was an advanced question so basically the task is you are given an integer n find and print the sum of all divisors starting from one okay nothing else so actually i hope this is visible to you still i am going to write the sample test cases here so basically what you are asked that is let's say you are given one sample input six okay so you have to find the factors of six that is one two three then six so six is divisible by these four one two three six okay so you have to sum all the divisors all the uh, factors so six plus three plus two plus one is equal to twelve so the output will be twelve okay so i hope you understood so let me show you the second sample input that is let's say twelve okay so for this second sample input the output should be what so the divisors or factors will be like 1, 2, 3, 4, then 6, then 12 itself. Okay. So if you if we add these all, if we add these all, then what it becomes? 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 plus 4, that is 10. 10 plus 6 is equal to 12. Sorry. Um 10 plus 6 is equal to 16 plus 12 is equal to 28. So the output will be 28. So I hope you understood. Okay. So if you understood, then please solve the problem in Java or C as you want. If you can't solve then watch till the end and if you solved already then please give a solution in the comment section because your solution may be different so i'll learn from you as well okay so basically what will be our approach to the solution so at first we'll go uh, we'll go through like we'll initialize a for loop from one to the number itself okay from one to the number itself so we'll check if like at first we will initialize n is equal to 12 okay n is equal to 12 or n is equal to 6 so at first we will check in the for loop if the n is divided by the i if n is divided by the i if it is that means that is the factor of that number so that's why we will add that inside another third variable sum okay so let me uh so let me share you the solution so that it will be easier to understand okay so uh let me write it so at first uh, i hope you know the structure of java so inside the main method i'm writing full code just you have to maintain the function etiquettes okay write the code inside a function okay nothing else so i'm writing full code inside main function okay so i hope you will maintain this in your code okay and you will write the full code inside another function and implement that then give the code in the comment section okay so at first what i will do at first i will initialize the n in 10 is equal to 6 or 12 anything as you want at first okay then i will run a for loop okay i'll run a for loop for int i is equal to 1 so i have to run sorry i is equal to 1 2 i less than n okay less than equal to n because i have to run the for loop up to n okay then i plus plus then i have to check if the n that means 6 is divided by this i at first if yes so let me check it if n is divided by i is equal to 0 that means no remainder then it is factor so i have to add that factor so to which i have to add that so for that we have to initialize another 
variable let's say in sum is equal to zero okay so then we have to add that with sum okay sum is equal to sum plus i or sum plus is equal to i whatever you want so at first i is equal to one so six is divided by one so it will get added to sum so sum will become one at first so in the next iteration the i will be increased so i will be two okay then it will check if n that means six mod 2 is equal to is equal to 0 yes if we divide 6 by 2 then remainder is 0 so we have to add that with the sum so sum was 1 okay sum was 1 then the sum will be again added with 2 then in the second third iteration the i will be 3 okay i will be 3 so 6 if we divide 6 by 3 then it will uh, leave a uh, remainder 0 so we have to add that with sum as well so 1 plus 2 plus 3 okay then it will go to the last fourth iteration so it will be 4 so this will not be matching so it will ex uh, i mean it will escape then fifth then sixth so in sixth iteration it will be 6 so 6 mod 6 is equal to 0 so sum plus is equal to i so it will get added to it okay so 6 so the output will be 12 this way okay so let me just print the value of sum so that we get the value okay so sum okay so let me just print it so that it will get it will show the output so uh sorry i think the network connection is not that much well so as you can see the output is 12 okay so as expected so for 12 the output should be 18 so let me show it so for 12 the output should be 16 sorry 28 as expected okay so let me show you the solution in c plus plus okay so as i have told you earlier if you want the solution of all the recent questions then please damn me at my study this is included in our prime materials so this cost only 69 rupees so i hope you will consider it okay so let me show you the java solution sorry c plus plus solution so as you can see the same logic same thing we have uh, maintained in c++ as well so at first we are uh, initializing the value of n then we are uh, we are using a for loop and running it from 1 to the number itself then we are checking if n mod i is equal to, is equal to 0 then we are initializing another third variable sum is equal to 0 to which we are adding the all factors okay then at the end of the for loop we are printing the sum okay nothing else so let me just print it and let me show you guys as you can see the output is 12 and for number 12 the output should be 28 and as expected okay so as you have observed that the question is very easy okay so some of the factors this is the very easy question still this was asked on the second question that means the advanced section okay so still uh this may happen to you as well or may not happen okay so it can be uncertain or certain okay so i hope you understood whatever i have told in this session so if you found this video helpful then please subscribe this channel and watch the playlist regarding any company that you want and please join our telegram channel t.me slash we can not there we'll discuss all the things regarding your placement and regarding all corporate updates okay so i hope you will do so whatever i have told thank you for today's session